Yes, I got just uh, one comment. No, miss. Okay, so it is not covered. So we will uh, now do the poem versus. So I, I expect all of you to sit your textbooks and your English textbooks. I hope you all are having the textbook in right in front of you. Nose versus eyes. Lovely poem, and after that, I'll go into the lesson today. Uh, these are the two things which I covered in this lecture. Uh, that is one point six Tiger Hills, and uh, the poem Nose versus Eyes. Two point five. Upon Westminster's bridges already done. Now we'll do two point five Nose versus Eyes, page number eighty seven. With, uh, did we finish with Midsummer's Night Dream last lecture? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, perfect. So now I'll take up nose versus eyes. Let us do a poem. I want to finish up with that also. The poetry section because you need to concentrate more on um, the appreciation of the poem also. So Nose Versus Eyes is written by William Cooper, uh, who is a very, very, if you have the textbook right in front of you, do keep it open. Yeah. Um, he is the most popular poet of 18th century English poets. And his poems, basically, it is given in your textbook only in the beginning about the poet. So before we start a poem, always we should know very clearly about the poet. So if we know about the poet, we can move into the poem very quickly. So he talks about uh, here in his poem, he is mainly talks about nature, everyday life. He is uh, described by uh, S.T. Coleridge as the best modern poet of his times. What, what is the meaning of a modern poet? Modern poets are the poets who actually writes about what is happening right now at that particular moment or whatever they see around themselves. Everything attracts them to write a poet. They don't have to be in nature. Poet hone ke liye nature mein jane ki zarat nahi hai for the modern poets. Modern poets can write or compose poem looking at anything, any single thing, the wall, the color, the fan, the light, the, um, you know, the windows, the, anything can make them write a poem. So that is why William Cooper has been described by S.T. Coleridge as a modern poet of his times. And of course, he was, uh, he had studied jurisprudence his later, <coughs> excuse me, he later admitted that he was not much inclined to the legal profession. So he wrote that, what did he write? Happy is the one who knows just as much of the law to make himself a little merry now and then with the solemnity of juris of uh, jurisdiction or the pro uh, proceedings. So you should know law only that much as much as it helps you. Don't delve deeper into the law. Then as a result, all the time, you will always be thinking this is right, that is wrong, this is legal, this is illegal. And as a result, you will have a lot of commotions in your life. So only read when law is necessary. So refer to the law only when you need it. Otherwise, don't delve into law or legal things. Do what your heart makes you do. So that is what he feels law is necessary in our life. Only that much. Not more than that. Law should not rule and dominate over your life. So in this poem also, it's a humorous, it's a satire actually on the judiciary system. It also mocks at the stone blind justice in a humorous manner. We know that what happens when we are in the judicial world and when justice is given. So he presents it in a satire with a form of just a dialogue between the nose versus the eyes, uh, wherein they are fighting. It's a fight between the nose and the eyes uh, that uh, about the lack of empathy and the common sense. So the spectacle or the glasses to um, who belongs to them is does the spectacle belong to the eyes or does it belong to the nose? And then there is this tongue who comes in between and he is actually playing the role of a judge. So I told you it's a satire. So what do you mean by a satire, children? What is a satire? The nose and the eye. What do you mean by satire? 
anyone can tell me so satire is actually okay so if you all are not ready to tell you can even type it in the comment section see these are the terms which are used when we are uh, reading poems so you should know the meanings of it also so satire is basically the use of humor to attack a person or basically it's uh, the idea or a behavior that you think is bad or silly so it's it, by using humor you are attacking a person so here the poet's main attacking is to the jurisdiction okay voice is breaking neha in studio voice is breaking now is my voice break neha is my voice still breaking if you can hear me properly am i clear to all of you no problem is okay so neha you can no ma'am okay uh, sir means uh, voice is clear right no ma'am means the voice is clear to you all all of you can you hear me because neha has written the voice was breaking in between no problem now okay fine uh, perfect let us yes ma'am it's clear okay uh, sara let's continue so i was talking that this poem is a satire satire means humorously presenting the jurisdiction the court that in the law what happens everything is humorous alicia is telling it's still breaking still the voice is breaking in between maybe the network issues beta in the middle of the explanation yeah in the middle of the acha uh, in between it goes up i think i should put my mic nearby only if you don't step it if you cannot hear it properly then not understand the main uh, appreciation where to write the summary of poem if you don't understand clearly so it become difficult for you to write the poem um actually so okay let us try and continue i hope right now it is clear and you can hear me little properly kaikesha can you hear me now because kaikesha was telling in the middle of the explanation actually ma'am it's still breaking okay not clear this um what will be done instable network connection probably little bit breaking and the headphone is proper or not i'll try changing the headphone probably that can be an issue okay anmol is telling don't know why they are facing issues ma'am it's clear okay for perfect now can you all hear i have changed the headphone also technical issues keep on coming but if you cannot hear there is no point for me to continue that is why i wanted that you all should hear it properly okay sara is telling it's clear now okay perfect then probably there was something with the headphone issues anyway 
so let us continue once again um, um if it's not clear do let me know because without being clearer um i cannot continue uh, the poem will not be it will not be able to do justice with the poem and as it is we are doing a poem of justice wherein uh, it's a satire on justice itself so if we are not able to do justice to the poem so it will not be correct so let us uh, once again come back to the poem Uh, it's a satire written by William Cowper on the judiciary system, and he does it very humorously. Um, since it's a satire, he talks about the nose versus the eyes, the spectacles. You know the spectacles, the one which I'm wearing right now. The spectacles, where does it actually belong to? That was the big question. Uh, they, there was a war be uh, because of this, and this was brought. This uh, debate was brought to the court. and the judge was the tongue tongue was acting as a judge i told you it's a humorous poem uh, so as a result the tongue was acting as a judge in between and the eyes demanded that the spectacle belong to it but the nose told without me the spectacle is of no use so that was the small war which was going in between uh, both of them they had uh, discussed it is an argument between them and putting it in the the tongue is appointed as a lawyer and who is arguing on both the sides tongue is not favoring anyone and without worrying who is the true owner of the spectacle so it is also clear that ear that ear you know the ear is chosen as the judge and uh, delivers the verdict in favor of nose who finally gives the verdict that the nose is the winner on the basis of nonsensical arguments there was no logic behind it the irony of his decision in giving the right ownership to the nose and asking the eyes to remain shut when the nose wears them is obvious and thus effective highlights the drawbacks of blind justice so when finally we see that the ear is giving the verdict that means selecting the nose side we know which is not correct eyes uh, is of course the spectacles always uh, is for the eyes the ear and the tongue are both in the roles that are perfectly fit their functions as the sensory organs however both are behaving in a manner which is completely opposite to the nature and this brings out the message that people should use the senses in the right manner and thus exercise and bring out around a good judgment and of course it's a delightful read the use the poet has made use of powerful imageries and successfully convinced all of us to make proper use of all our sensory organs if we are not using our sensory organs properly then we will not be able to come to the correct conclusion so the dispute between the eyes and the nose points out that that if the spectacles belong to the nose of eyes so tongue is in the role of lawyer please understand what sin tongue the lawyer not taking any not biased for the eyes or the nose the tongue is being the lawyer both for the eyes as well as for the nose and ear is the judge so finally they start this argument we have all the sensory organs working here let us now come to the it is divided into four eight stanzas four lines each in eight stanzas is having perfect lines here we can see your poet has maintained that rhyme scheme to come to the first stanza between nose and eyes a strange contest arose the spectacle set them unfairly wrong the point in dispute was as all the world knows to which the said spectacles ought to belong so the main contest was that everyone knows spectacle belongs to whom but then why the argument came to the court if we know who is the winner if we know exactly who has won the case then why is this case brought to the court so this is the how the jurisdiction um, in the judiciary also the same thing is happen happening we have cases going on for ages together and reason no one is able to give the proper reason so the tongue was the lawyer and argued the cause with great deal of skill and a wig 
wig um, is uh, a small special covering for the head wig you know the false hair which you wear that is wig so the tongue was in the coat with the gloves and a wig full of learning while she baron your baron is again you can see the mean even here a very powerful person is the judge who uh, sat to balance the laws so framed for his talent in a nicely discerning so showing very good judgment here we are talking about the sense of senses sense organs eyes nose then tongue and ear so the four sense organs are working here to solve the case the spectacles belong to who is it for the eyes or is it for the nose whereas we as audience we know that it is of course for the eyes but yes there are certain points which they highlighted also ye kya hai what messages you are writing nahi close aayega the phir anmol roshan roshan is writing something anmol उसको मैसेज करने लगा रोशनी से बात हुई एंड ऑल तो हु इज रोशन यार मैंने कोई मैसेज नहीं किया अभी तक तो हां मैंने कोई मैसेज ही नहीं किया मैम अभी तक आपने मुझे डायरेक्ट मैसेज किया आई थिंक यू वर मैसेजिंग टू योर फ्रेंड्स नो मैम नो नो अभी तक मैंने कोई मैसेज किया ही नहीं किसी को आई गेस कोई मेरे नाम से एंटर कर रहा है गाइस मैम पहले भी ऐसा हुआ है अच्छा ये कुछ भी आई डोंट नो ऑल बैड बैड गाइस आर देयर यस मैम प्लीज रिपोर्ट दिस समबडी इज यूजिंग आईडी एंड एंटरिंग देन और प्रोबेबली फ्रॉम द सेम क्लास बिकॉज़ द आईडी इज शेयर्ड बी टू द सेम क्लास आई डोंट नो इट्स गोइंग टू समवेयर एल्स फॉर व्हाट बट इट इज इन रोशन्स नेम आई एम रीडिंग आउट फ्रॉम देयर ओन सारे बातें शेयर करते हैं हम वेरी बैड एनीवे प्लीज बी केयरफुल योर नेम्स एंड आईडीज दैट यू हैव टू चेक इट आउट आई एम नॉट गोइंग इट आई एम कंप्लीटिंग विद दिस आई एम कमिंग द पोएम इफ नॉट रोशन रोशन यू रियली नीड टू चेक विद द टेक टीम व्हाट इज हैपनिंग एंड हु इज एंटरिंग विद योर नेम नीड टू सॉल्व इट गेट इट सॉल्व या अनमोल को लिया मैंने सीधा मैंने लिया अनमोल को अनमोल आर यू देयर या नहीं लिया अभी तक अनमोल हैव यू जॉइंड नो मैम मैंने कुछ नहीं किया नहीं यू आर नॉट एबल टू जॉइन सो सीधा वाज रिक्वेस्टिंग मी टू टेक हिम यस मैम यस 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 ओके सो लेट अस कंटिन्यू सो देन द देयर इन योर स्टेप टू बैलेंस द डिसिंग व्हिच वाज द गोइंग ऑन द ऑब्जेक्शंस द कोर्ट व्हिच वाज गोइंग ऑन so they try to take that into it and uh, the court scene is in swing in behalf of the nose it will quickly appear and your hardship sorry in your sorry in your and your lordship is said will undoubtedly find that the nose has had the spectacles always in wear which amounts to possession time out of mind so he gives the the pay so oh, you know the spectacle gets a support and as a result then uh, the eyes are getting that spectacles place the eyes can see it that the nose has the spectacle always in the wear which mounts to possession time out of mind then holding the spectacles up to the core your lordship observes that they are made with a straddle as wide as the ridge of the nose is in short designed to sit close to it, just like a saddle 
So straddle is extended across on both the sides. You can see the spectacle is having this straddle, this mark in between. It is called a straddle. Uh, did you understand what is a straddle? The, this main uh, center part of the spectacles. Why was it made? Agar in most ke importance nahi hote, then probably that part would not have been made. Why did they make that part? Because they thought that there should be this nose who will make the spectacle stand on it. So as a result, uh, your tongue is favoring the nose right now, telling that you can see the ridge, the straddle, as wide as the ridge of the nose. It's giving that uh, the making of the spectacle is made in such a way that nose, it should stand on the nose. Designed to sit to it just like a satin. Again, would your lordship moment pause? That's a case that had happened, and maybe again that the visage or the countenance had not a nose. Pray, who would or who could wear spectacles then? So this is a question. Another one more question was roused. That pray, if, just imagine if you would have no nose, then who would be able to wear a spectacle? So the spectacle's value is just because of the nose. On the whole, it appears, and my argument shows with the reasoning, the court will never condemn. So the court can never condemn my points, which I'm putting forth right now, because all the points are proven. Just see, just imagine a person uh, in spectacle without the nose. The spectacle should hang from here. How will that person wear the spectacle? They need the ear, they need the nose, wear the spectacle. Otherwise, it's not possible to wear. And he also says that I know that the court will not condemn. It's not disagree with me. But the spectacles plainly were made for the nose. And the nose was as plainly intended for them. So the court should agree with me on the fact that the nose is made to hold the spectacle. And everyone agrees to that. Without the nose, there would be no case or no one can. Again, the voice is not clear. Neha is telling again. Yeah, it showed in between that the internet little problem is there. But let's see. I hope you all can hear now once again. Today I'm wasting a lot of time because of internet problems. Anyway, now let me finish at least this poem. Yeah, so then knows at this point clearly that uh, this is the main reason that the nose was made basically to hold the spectacles. Otherwise, why did they put the straddle in between the spectacle? The construction of the spectacle was also made in such a way that in between the two eyes, there is a straddle in between. And this straddle is meant to be placed on the nose. So the nose is very important. Then shifting aside, the lawyer knows how he pleaded again on behalf of the eyes. Now he comes in favor of the eyes. So much time he was favoring the nose. His work is to favor. He's a lawyer for both. For the eyes also for the nose also. So now he's shifting to her eyes and telling, but what were his arguments? Few people know. For the court did not think they were equally wise. So he says that eyes, of course, spectacles are used for the eyes. So he gives the verdict in favor of the eyes. So his lordship decreed. So he, the lordship, that means your ears. That is the judge who is doing the work of a judge. Has given has given a verdict that uh, grave solemn tone. This is a clear without one if or but that whenever the nose put his spectacles on by daylight or candlelight, eyes should be shut. So if you feel that the nose is important, then what is the importance of the eyes? You just imagine that nose, okay, you are telling for spectacles, it is important. So let the eyes be shut. Close the eyes and wear the spectacles and roam. What can you see? What is the use of spectacles then? So finally, the verdict came in favor of the eyes. That spectacles are meant for the eyes, not for the nose. You are in difficulty in wearing, that is okay. 
if you shut your eyes and wear the spectacles with the nose there, don't have your eyes only and uh, the spectacles there on the nose because you have the nose, you're not able to see. So eyes are important. Keep, make the spectacles, you give a space. Importance of the spectacle is because of the eyes, because it helps us to have a clearer vision. Just imagine if you had no eyes or if your eyes, if you're completely blinded or you shut your eyes, you will not be able to see. So finally, the eyes win. So you can just imagine that it was just a human not that both are winners actually, both are important. We know it. Uh, every single reader who read the poem or who knows about what is happening in the jurisdiction also. Whenever a case is there, we know very nicely who is the winner. But the lawyer changes the case and gives in favor of some humorous note they bring up, which is unnecessary. And finally, some win who is not at all important. So as a result, you can see what discussion this case should have not been there at all. But William Cooper uses the humor tinge and with a satire has created that the people should always remember what is very important. He was a possessor and therefore the spectacles belongs to him. Then it had straddled as wide as the ridge of a nose. It was designed to rest on the nose as perfectly as a cell on the horn. This again proved that the spectacles belong to the nose. So that is how the argument began in the favor of the nose, but it ended in the favor of eyes. So that is how it goes completely into different things. So we have all the four organs working here. Understood the main poem? Yes, children? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Shivan is able to... And what are the others? Did you understand? I think I've understood and it's clear enough. You can put it in the comment section. Yeah, Veda is done. Yes, a comment section is always used for that. If you're not a, not willing to speak at all, then you can use the comment section also. Um, yes, okay. Two, three, this is okay. Fine, perfect. So we are... Uh, battlefield and war fronts. Vedant is telling voice is not coming. Oh, it is not coming at all. Vedant. Can you hear me, Vedant? Vedant, are you able to hear? really have no idea uh, because okay yes it's coming okay perfect uh, if it's coming it's perfect okay so now we'll be doing 1.6 general Ved prakash malik has written this story tiger Hills. it is the story of a war battle front and how they won the battle this is about tiger Hill. It's a place, situation, the location of the place, page number 53, it's given in your textbook. It is open page number 53. You should know the location and the place and what is happening because it's a description of the war and how bravely the soldiers fought in this war. So if we, uh, it is better advice that we should do line this explanation, but still first I'll like to give the summary of it, which part is more important. So, first of all, I come to the focus in the story that is the location of Tiger Hill. And for that, I will just share my screen. Yeah, I think you can see the screen. 
all of you can you see the screen yes yeah so this is the tiger hill um where you can see here tiger hill that's the position and they had to capture india gate and help so the there were very less people with him it the location here is almost 10 kilometers north of shagar kal le highway so the enemy positioning on this mountain laptop dominated the parts of its highway so it is 10 kilometers north yeah in your textbook it's given the explanation is given after the recapture of the toloing and the adjacent features evicting the enemy from the well fortified position became a priority they needed to protect these two areas which are near the tiger hill they were located here this helmet india gate so these two places they needed to protect um, uh, which was given under the charge then uh, brigadier mps bajwa commander so uh, we'll come back to the story now brigadier mps bajwa was in commander at that time and uh, was assigned the mission of capturing this tiger hill please remember the names brigadier mps bajwa was given the task of protecting the tiger hills but how many soldiers did he have with him at that time only eight grenadiers and who are grenadiers grenadiers are people who have grenades of course they know the use of grenades so 18 grenadiers he had and eight sick you know the sick army is very powerful and very strong of course full army our one one powerful but the sick is uh, believed to be more powerful in the hills and the mountains so he had only 18 grenadiers and eight sick with that he had to protect the tiger hills please remember the lines and the lines which i am reading from the text I'll try to make it short, easy for you to understand the chapter. So children just need to keep the textbook open. Now, right now, I'm in page number 54. Uh, wherein, uh, in in uh, third paragraph, you will find that 80 grenadiers now recopped their achievements with eight sick ready deployed at the base. So all of them was steadfastly, there was a plan of action which was made uh, by Brigadier MP Bajwa, he said that they will be attacking from all sides, will not attack from only one side. But the Air Force came and targeted to help Tiger Hill on 2nd and 3rd July. But in the last week of June, only they were stationed there and they were working on it, capturing and covering from all sides. It was uh, a plan. A brigadier MPS who made that will have a complete, you know, attack from all sides and protect the hell. I show you the place, the Tiger Hill from the Tiger Hill. They will be protecting India Gate and and which one? Children, what? Which are the two places which they will be safe and protecting? They're given in charge the health and the India gate they would be protecting. And this they started in June, but 2nd and 3rd July, something happened. They got help from the Air Force also. And that was the bullseye. And it served their motion. Um, Tiger Hill extends about 2,200 meters. Page number 55, second paragraph. You can see the location and the extent of the Tiger Hills. 2,200 meters. to south so that's the extent of tiger hills or itne pure area mein these only this few 18 grenadiers and eight sick they were the ones who were in charge and they valiantly were in uh, duty or completely in charge of protecting approximately a company of 12 northern light infantry had the whole feature at 1900 hours, that is 7 p.m., 3rd July, 18 grenadiers com uh, commence a multi directional. I told you, multi directional. They had already flamed. Brigadier M. Bajwa said 
multi directional they, they will not attack from one side they will attack from all the sides multi directional so that was a great decision made by uh, brigadier and with that they started moving the assault under the cover of bad weather and darkness it was completely very rough weather 7 pm 3rd july remember the date uh, company captured intermediate position called tang by uh, um, 130 hours on 4th july finally it was done on 4th july meanwhile Cap captain sachin uh, nimbalkar set the company assault from the east so we had from east as well as from the west uh, the brigadiers and captain attacking and finally we can see that our commandos such in nimbalkar and balwant singh together in 4th july they did this achievement and uh, 100 hours on 4th july a carefully orchestrated artillery bombardment such in nimbalkar balwant singh along with their men approached the tiger hill top by climbing a sheer cliff and caught the enemy unaware the enemy was not able to understand where did this such in nimbalkar and balwant singh came directly and they were they had surprised the enemies after a spell of hand to hand fighting they succeeded in capturing object although there were 18 grenadiers held top now linking up with them was not easy and the initial surprise was more of enemy started gearing up for launching counter attacks now there were some counter attacks of course the main attack was done now at the stage 8 mountain division he realized that it would not be possible to evict the enemy from tiger hill completely as long as the supply lines along with the western spar were intact now it they decided that it would not be possible for one people to do it from one side so they needed roshni jadav is waiting in the uh, children actually i missed out probably tell her to join again roshni i don't know because i am opening the book ebook so i have to go to that other page to open so as a result decide i don't know who is waiting as a result in the beginning only i wait for everyone to join in okay tell roshni to join again probably i missed out when she joined yeah okay janvi will be telling her so i'll take a look when i can make i can add her or not i think i should make one monitor if i'm going to continue with zoom then i should have a monitor in the class and a co-host who can just admit who is entering Uh, that's a better option i think to make some who is very regular sayed i can see is very regular shawn is also very regular so i can make uh, one of them of course as co-host to admit people because when i'm opening the textbook i'm not able to uh, roshni did you join roshni were you able to join yes ma'am okay perfect yeah let's continue um then we have uh, probably uh, coming to the next part remember the war is going on now the uh, counter attacks were going on they had uh, remember which were the two people who please take give the names properly sachin nimbalkar and balwant singh had surprised them attacking the tiger uh, the enemy from the back side from the they were completely surprised but then they did not stop with the counter attack Uh, mohendra puri and mps bajwa then issued orders to eight sikh to attack and capture helmet and india gate both located on the western spar so that the enemy reinforcement to tiger hill top could be prevented the move was also intended to cut off the enemy's supply route so the supply route means from where their soldiers would be coming they would stand there and block their way that was the plan of action given by Uh, the major and they decided that if they block the way for the enemy front they would not be able to get in more soldiers to uh, you know attack tiger hills 
they had to protect tiger hill that was the main intention and then finally it was western spar and a dog column of only eight sick people remember children this is very very intense war going on and only eight sick from our side led by major ravindra singh and lieutenant rk shekhawat shekhawat sorry comprising of four jcos and 52 soldiers climbed this rock face under poor visibility conditions and was able to capture india gate after a tough fight in this battle subedar nirmal singh led the assault uh, platoon he was engaged in hand to hand fighting till the end and was also responsible for beating back a counter attack so despite of the heavy casualties the death scenes and all this going on eight sick people had exploited its success up to the helmet they went to the helmet up till the helmet and the tiger hill uh, protected the road for where the amenities were coming to the enemies now the enemies had no amenities so of course we could protect our tiger hill now in new delhi what was happening there our writer here you know uh, who is a writer i told you the name of the writer general bet prakash malik he was the one who was announcing and giving the reports uh, moment to moment to the public and to the uh, general committee in new delhi head office and he said uh, anxious the, everyone it was a very tense situation people there 18 grenadiers and eight sick people were there people were all the time counting on them next morning krishnapal um, in 16 hours informed that they had captured 18 grenadiers at captured the entire hill top and uh, then i in rajesh shrad here you come to pay my 57 children uh, paragraph Wherein your writer is telling that he had informed Rajesh Mishra and Prime Minister, who was scheduled to address a public meeting in Haryana at 1,000 hours, the Defence Minister was on the way to Amritsar when he landed at the airport. I gave him this exciting news that the Tiger Hill is protected finally. 18 Grenadiers and a Sikh battalion fought very, very uh, valiantly and did not bother. With a count of soldiers behind them, they just saw that they had to protect the Tiger Hill, the helmet, and area gate. So now the day fourth July nineteen ninety nine was also important for another one more reason. Fourth July they won the battle. They were able to protect Tiger Hill. The other warriors were removed from there. Fourth July is also important for one more reason. why you can come to page number 57 the last uh, second last paragraph nawaz sharif was due to meet us president bill clinton later in the day about 10 to 15 hours before their meeting we made sure that the whole world came to know about the recapture of tiger hill and this was likely outcome of the war Nawaz Sharif was about to discuss with Bill Clinton about the war which was going on in Tiger Hill, but luckily enough, ten to fifteen hours before the war ended, because India got again its uh, regime over the Tiger Hills, and our uh, soldiers fought valiantly. The commanders, eighteen Grenadiers and eight Sikh, had done this superb job of protecting it. now on 8th july after the entire tiger hill objective had been cleared the situation stabilized 18 grenadiers halted the indian tricolor on tiger hill top throughout a 10 years uh, nearly two month long war the battalion equipped itself with high professionalism and honor displays displaying the unshakable determination and collective valor all the members covered themselves with the glory and uh, after the war the battalion requested un mission army headquarters to send seraloni uh, there to the battalion successfully carried out a major rescue operation so with lot of pride general vedprakash malik had written this 
uh, valiant attacks of 18 grenadiers and eight Sikh in the Tiger Hill. And they were able to capture Tiger Hill, which is located at the far end of the Kargil borders. So there we can see our soldiers did amazing work. Do read the chapter, children. Don't forget, go through it. Uh, you will get to know little details and you will understand, you will enjoy the story. Uh, the, the language which was used by General uh, Ved Prakash Malik gives us a complete pictorial description about the war scene. So you will understand what the soldiers were undergoing and what was happening to them. I hope this is clear to all of you up till now, both the chapters. You can put in the comment section, those who don't want to say, but or else you can share if you have understood or Did you understand if you is clear Tiger Hills? The chapter, yes, so, okay. I'm not sure, sir. Shiva, you told sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Shiva, finally you understood that I am not sir, I am miss. I wish, yes, okay. Understood. So all of you understood both the chapters. Today's uh, main uh, agenda was to complete up these two chapters. One poem from the poetry section. That was the last poem. And finally, we did with this chapter also. That is also covered from your portion. So I hope I was uh, clear enough in the explanation. If you have any doubts, please put in the comment section. I want to see in the comment section any doubts regarding it. And if you have understood also, don't forget to tell. Yes, Miss, like only Ayush and Shivam, few of them has just written. I want more and more students to write that uh, whether you have understood or not or which part you did not understand, please mention that also. Yes, Anmol is raising the hand. Anmol, what happened? Do you have a doubt? Anmol has raised the hand for what reason, Anmol? No, ma'am. Okay, no, ma'am. Okay, so no doubt. Chalo, that means 